Hey everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. Uh, if this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and the Coding Zoo is all about teaching other people to learn how to program. Um, this is our JavaScript building block series. This is lesson number 14, I think. Yep, 14. Yep, 14. Uh, <laughs> I lose track. And in this lesson, we are going to cover um, JavaScript uh, for loop, uh, the while loop, and the do while loop. Uh, basically, these loops allow you to loop through a data structure like an array. So we're going to go over these three loops and we're going to describe kind of the difference in them and when you would use one versus the other. Hey, I hope that interests you. If so, we're going to jump right in. But before we do, I just want to remind you, there's a subscribe button below somewhere over there, I think. Uh, go ahead and click subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to get alerts. We have videos on JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and we would love to help you learn how to program and answer any questions you may have. Let's uh, go ahead and jump right in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you haven't been following along this far in our lessons, we have a main file, an index file. Uh, we create a new folder each lesson. Uh, this is lesson number 14, so I have a CZJS14 folder. We created this from a template that we started at the beginning of this series. It's a very small template. So in this template, again, we just have the main JS and the index. Uh, feel free to pause the video and copy this file over. I recommend that you code while I code. Uh, it will help you to remember what's being taught. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we're going to cover is the for loop. We covered it in a previous lesson, so we're going to go over it real quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a for loop. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create an array. We'll call it students. Okay, so after the array, I'm going to go ahead and loop through this array uh, using a for loop. So this is one of the first loops that, we, that was ever created in JavaScript. So I've got four parentheses, and then I'm defining a variable called student count. This is going to keep track of which index I'm at in the array. I'm starting out with zero. Arrays in JavaScript are zero based. So I have let student count equal zero. You put a semicolon, and I want to loop as long as student count is less than students dot length, the length of students. So. And I want to increment student count each loop. I have a variable student count zero. This loop is going to loop as long as student count is less than the student's array's length. And student count will be incremented each loop. So I'm going to go ahead and document out each student using document write. Write is a function on the document object which writes out to your HTML browser. So I'm going to use the student count variable to pick a particular student so I can write that particular student out. All right, I'm going to look over the code real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, I did. I typed so fast. forgot to spell that correctly. I didn't spell that correctly. Click Save. Go to my browser. Click Refresh. And there we go. So it looped through the array. Uh, it found each element in the array. It kept looping till it got to the end, and it printed the names out. So that's a, that's a basic for loop. You can loop through an array and do whatever you want with the data in the array. Pretty simple. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over the while loop. I'm going to write out a, a horizontal rule just so we can divide each of these to see better. Okay, so 
let's do while student count is less than students dot length all right so I'm basically doing the same thing as above uh, this is one example uh, um, you can use uh, either of these ways of looping to loop through this array. So I've got while students count, student count is less than student's length. Go ahead and loop. So let's write out. Oh, why don't we, why don't we make it uh, a little quicker? I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this up here. All right, write that out. And um, let's go ahead and we have to increase student count. There's nothing in the while loop that in that is increase in the student count. So let's go ahead and increase it. Okay. Okay, so look over it real quick. Make sure I didn't leave any bugs there. Uh, while student count is less than student's length, that looks right. Document write out uh, a line break and the student at that index, and then up the student count so I can go to the next student. Um, I, did, I did miss something. So in the for loop, you're able to create the variable student count. I haven't created it yet. So I'm going to do let student count equals zero. All right, I think that's it. Let's click save. Go over here, refresh. And there you go. So I loop through the array again, and I use the while loop. So when would you use a while loop versus a for loop? They kind of both do the same thing, right? Um, and there are even more loops built into an array you can use later. It's actually better than the for loop. Why use one of these versus the other? Here, let me show you real quick. So while is basically based on something being true. It doesn't necessarily have to be the length of the array. It could be anything in your program, right? So here, let's change it up a little bit. Give me a different scenario. Let should program exit equals false. And let's do a while loop. While we should not uh, exit. While not true, we're going to loop. Okay, I'm going to create a person variable. Or yeah, person variable. Uh, let's name it student. I'm going to create a student variable. I'm going to create another variable called grade. Now prompt is used to tell the browser to get input. You usually wouldn't use it. You usually would use HTML for that. Uh, but we're going to do that. We're going to use it for this lesson. Fumble fingers today. Isn't that isn't that every day? I got big fingers small keys on keyboard okay all right so if the grade is an A I want to exit this program otherwise I would keep I want to keep entering students until I find one that makes an A so I can congratulate the student that's the gist of this program Also want to exit this loop if I find the person who has an A. So I'm going to set the flag to true. Should program exit equals true. All right, let's double check the code. I've got a variable should program exit. It's set to false. I want to loop while it's not true. I want to get a variable called student. And I want to prompt to enter the name student and I want to prompt for the grade uh, if the grade is a I want to congratulate and exit this program because I found my first person who, who made an a hopefully there's more um, 
And I think that looks right. A lot of typing there. I'm sure I may have left a bug in there, but let's see. Save it. Click refresh. There we go. All right. Enter student name. Shane. And he gets F. All right. Student name. Jai. And she gets a C. Enter student name. Nick. And he gets an A. There we go. Congratulations, Nick. Very cool. I forgot to uh, put a line break, but you can see it right there. Congratulations, Nick. Awesome. So this loop not only works with arrays, but you can also loop depending on any type of Boolean. Um, so that's one reason you might want to use a while loop versus a, do, uh, a for loop. All right, so our next loop and final loop is do while. We're going to go over do while. So do while is very much like while, except the while is at the end and not the beginning. After that, we're going to cover break and continue, and that will be it for today's lesson. Okay, let's move back over to um, my code here, and I'm going to comment this out so when we run it again, we won't get prompted. All right, let's create a do while loop. So I'm going to do and we're going to loop and then while and I want some kind of statement here and I'm going to say while um, student count is less than students dot length and I'm going to basically loop through each student again and print them out. So before I'm going to put a horizontal rule again up here. Let's go ahead and cut and paste that. Make it a little bit easier to be seen. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and print it out again. And we're going to need to up the count again too. So let's do that also. Okay. So that should cover it. Uh, oh, I forgot to set it back to zero. You'll notice up here I, I, I created the variable. It's zero. We loop through it and it continually grows. It's going to be already past zero. So I need to set it back to zero, right? So student count equals zero. I've already defined it, so I don't have to do let or var. I'm just going to initialize it as zero. Okay. This should work. Um, so I'm going to loop and print something out. So no matter what, it doesn't matter um, whether student count is already past the length. I'm going to print the first one out. That's the way this works. Um, let's try it out. So save, hit refresh. Oh, I forgot to up my number. Let's go back. This might help. Got a code bug there. Let's squash that bug. It's always a typo. Smallest typo. Click refresh. There we go. So I loop through them just like the while loop. Okay, so the difference is if you start out with student count already being greater than student's length, um, it's still going to try to print something out here, uh, which is not good in this case. In some cases, you may want it to, but in this case, you don't. So let's say... Um, student count is 11. We don't have 11 students. So what do you think is going to happen? Probably an error. Um, and why is that? Because it's going to print this out. It's not going to do a check first. It's going to do the check last. Now, if it was the while loop, it would do the check up here, up where the while is at. Uh, it would do it first. So it would never actually get into the block to write it out. Let's try it. Click save, refresh, and boom. So did not work correctly. It printed undefined because that array element is undefined. So it actually didn't evaluate first. It just went ahead and ran the command first and evaluated later and stopped. So that's the big difference. That's the, some cases you may want to, to always do something first and then do more. Uh, and you may want to do that, that item first always. Okay. So let's see what happens when I do it with the while loop. Let's set it greater. Save. And if I click refresh, I bet you this right here will not be printed out at all. It's not going to do that first statement at all. There we go. It disappeared. 
So that's that's kind of the difference of and do while and while. Hope that makes sense. If not, leave me a comment below and I'll explain further. Okay, one final piece before we uh, end this lesson. Let's go over here. Uh, actually, two. Let's go over two things before we end this lesson. Um, I'm going to change this back to zero. What if I don't want to loop through all of these? I just want to loop through it until I found a particular student, right? Um, so let's do if students student count is equal to so the students the student at this student's index is equal to let's say Shane. All right, let's do Jai. Jai E. Then I don't want to loop through the rest. I printed out the, the ones I wanted to print out, and I want to stop. Well, you normally can't do that because you're going to keep looping till the end of the array because you're using a, uh, a while is less than student's length. But there is a command that will let you jump out of the loop. Break. Let's see if how that. Let's see if that works. All right, so if I click refresh, uh, of course, it's not there yet, but you should see just these two printed out. Let's click refresh. There we go. So it looped through. It found the Jai was there, and then it stopped the loop. It broke out of loop. It break. It, it did a break. All right, what if I wanted to um, loop through the array and not print out a particular person? I wanted to print them all out, but that person. Break wouldn't help me because break would stop when I found that person. What command would help me do that? Well, that command is continue. Let's go back to our lesson here, our code here. Uh, I'm going to go to this for loop, and I'm going to put it if. I'm going to use the same if. If equals uh, Jai E. All right. So if it equals Jai E, I want to continue, I, which will go continue to the next uh, item in the loop without going to the next line. It's going to skip the following lines. Continue, press enter. So what we should see printed out is instead of these four names, we should see three without Jai being there. There we go. That's it. So that's it. Pretty simple. We've got to continue, a break. We have a for loop. We have a while loop. And we have a do while loop. So hopefully these make sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or send comments below. I will respond uh, and get back to you if there's anything you don't understand. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. We have many more to come. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out the codingzoo.com. We have other lessons out there. We have notes on the lessons you can study. And pretty soon we're going to have quiz uh, programs out there for each lesson. So check it out. Uh, and I hope to see you next time.